Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reading negative reviews of my favourite books. So I've had this video idea since I began my channel and I have been too scared to do it until now because I'm scared of these reviews A making good points <laughs> and B just hurting my feelings because these are my favourite books and I care about them a lot. But you know what, today I'm going to be brave and I'm going to read some of these one star reviews on Goodreads. So I can be quite, I don't know if this is the right word, but like sensitive to other people's opinions. Like when I finish a book and I'll rate it really highly and then I'll go and look at the reviews and if I see a negative review, I'll read it. And I'll just be like, they're making really good points here. And I'm like, do I even trust my own opinion anymore? Because like I agree that this book had these issues and Oh, so I'm scared that doing this video is going to make me hate my favourite books, but we're going to do it anyway because you know what? Content. <laughs> Hi, it's Teresa from the future here. I forgot to mention this, so I'm just adding it in now, but of course these people are very much entitled to their own opinions. Please don't think that I don't like these people or that there's anything wrong with them. You're allowed to dislike my favourite books. I just wanted to react to some of these opinions and see if I agreed with any, see if I really disagreed with any, and I hope that you'll enjoy watching it. So the first book I'm going to read negative reviews for is The Falling in Love Montage by Kira Smith. This, as you may know, is my favourite book of all time, so we're starting off with one that might hurt the most. I adore this book, it was very key in me accepting myself as a lesbian, it's a big part of that journey, big part of my booktube journey. I love it a lot. Kira is the sweetest. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> this is going to hurt. So I have found one here that says this book is promoted as a queer rom-com. It is not. This is a book about dementia. And they go on to then say how much dementia influences Searsha's journey in the story. And I agree that dementia is a huge part of the story, but I wouldn't say it's about dementia. It's I don't know, it's just one part of Saoirse's character and influences a lot of her decisions, a lot of the angst in the book is due to this and it does at times mean it's not a completely light-hearted story all the time but you know it's at, at its core it is still a rom-com. You know queer characters and characters in ro romances they have other things going on in their lives. They are not just having a romance and I don't know, I can see where this criticism can come from and I can see that if this is something that has affected you it would maybe bring you out to the story a bit and it can hurt a lot but overall it's still a rom-com. This review also says that Saoirse is self-absorbed, hypocritical, dismissive and rude <laughs> and her character is one of the most annoying cliches <laughs> and like, okay you're entitled to your own opinion but as someone who saw myself a lot in Searsha, ouch. <laughs> like, you didn't have to come for me like that, okay? So another review. I've never been more relieved to finish a book. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I didn't like it. I didn't like the main character. I didn't like anything about it, really. <laughs> okay, you're entitled to your wrong opinion. Let's move on. Okay, we have another one and similar to the first one, it's not impressed that there's other things happening in the book besides the romance. You know, that there's this drama with her ex-best friends, there's her mum with dementia, there's her dad getting married again, her stress about where she's going to go to university, and these things are also in romance books. <laughs> like, it can't just be romance. And it's something I love so much about Kira's books is that they're more than just their relationship and more than just the character's sexuality, like they also have these very complicated lives. It really informs all their decisions, all their, the way they view the world and that's so incredibly difficult to write and I think Kira does it so well so that you're like seeing someone be like, I hated that is a bit strange to me because it's like so completely opposite what I think. <laughs> Okay, I knew I was going to find this one, but I've got someone who did not like the resolution of the book, the ending of the book. If you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. If you've not, I won't spoil it, but I knew that this would be a controversial topic. I personally loved it. I thought it suited the characters very, very, very well, and I just could not imagine it 
ending in another way. I think it was just perfect for them, but it does invoke some different reactions in different people. And we have one here who says that up until the ending of the book, they would have given it a higher rating, but they did not like how it resolved. It felt uncompleted and they just weren't a fan. Okay, so I have another review that's saying something completely opposite to what we've heard before, saying the stories really lacked things actually happening. In my opinion, nothing was ever going on. And that's just the complete opposite to those other reviews and what they were complaining about. And I think that really shows how subjective reading and reviewing is, that someone can read a book and have this experience and then someone can have a completely opposite experience from the same book. That's just, <laughs> I love that. They're wrong, but I love it. And yes, they also did not like the ending. <laughs> Another review says there were a lot of references to Ireland that they didn't get. Do you know how many American books I've sat through? And I've not gotten all those references, but I've kept my mouth shut. Grit your teeth and bear it. Other countries exist. <laughs> Another review, and all it says is, sorry, but this was just bad. <laughs> I'm having the time of my life here. Okay, I've seen a few reviews now mentioning that the only thing that they liked was Oliver, which is Saoirse's kind of like frenemy. And I love that because I love him too. And I like that we are all united in liking Oliver. <laughs> but on that positive note, I'm going to switch to my next book. So the next book I'm going to look at one star reviews for is The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovic. This series is one of my all-time favourites, but it will have a lot of criticism and a lot of it will be valid criticism because this book definitely has problems, but I love it. <laughs> oh, the first one, I've read it before because it has 1200 likes. It's the top review that comes up when you search this book. It's full of spoilers though, so I cannot say it, but I can promise you it is very funny <laughs> and it does make some points. One of the points though is, no, there's no team sport on earth that can be com competently played if its team members are as likely to get into a fist fight with one another as with the opposing team. <laughs> Sorry, but I just gave the book drama. It made it really fun. <laughs> so I found another review and it says, the main problem with the book is the writing style. It was stunted and awkward and worsened my reading experience. And yeah, it's not very, it's not a great writing style. <laughs> like that, is probably one of the main criticisms of it, other than how it handles some sensitive topics, is that, yeah, it's not particularly well written in terms of narration and writing style, but it has its moments, okay? <laughs> Another thing I hated about this book, Exy. That's like the main thing of the book, is Exy, this made up sport that's like the this hybrid of lacrosse, but with the violence of ice hockey. It's like the, what the world of the book revolves around, what these characters revolve around. So if you hate that, you're going to struggle with the book. <laughs> okay, so they're not happy that the author created a new sport. But then they say, you want to create something new? Well, at least make it really realistic. Quidditch, bitch. <laughs> okay. So we, we can kind of, <laughs> we can kind of disregard this reviewer's credibility if they think Quidditch is a realistic sport. Whitney Atkinson, who was on YouTube, but I don't think she is anymore, but she calls it a fucked up mess. <laughs> oh dear. Someone says that this book doesn't just lack an actual plot, but has the most boring, mind-blowingly annoying as fuck characters I've met in a while. <laughs> Yeah, they're annoying and I love them for it. <laughs> I'm finding so many people calling it boring. And considering when I read the trilogy for the first time, I read them in three days because I was just addicted to them. I couldn't stop. I find that very interesting. Like, again, how so people can experience a story in so many different ways. Like, I love that. Don't love that for them that they're finding amazing literature boring. <laughs> That's a joke, it's not amazing literature, but you know what I mean. Okay, what's up next? One last stop up next. Oh, this one could hurt. <laughs> okay, the short version is, this author just wasn't for me, but I'm happy for her and I hope more queer books get published because of her success. The slightly longer version is, they have sex in the New York subway. Ew, no. <laughs> 
a valid point that was disgusting. <laughs> okay, so there's someone here, and Red, White and Royal Blue is one of their all-time favourites. So they're very excited for one last stop, but they're, they're just let down. I was so bored, uninterested, and I kept checking to see how much longer I had to go. And I was, I came into this expecting to find lots of comparisons between Red, White and Royal Blue and One Last Stop. Lots of people who loved Red, White and Royal Blue, but didn't love One Last Stop so much. I've seen people online say that heaps. <laughs> there was a woman on TikTok who said that she didn't like One Last Stop because they were lesbians. So like, I was expecting that level, <laughs> but yeah. This one's not like that though, as far as I can tell. Okay, so they conclude their review saying, everything I loved about Red, White and Royal Blue was missing from this book. From the fun setting to the characters that you felt attached to, to the background characters meshing well. I also think I just enjoyed the enemies to lovers aspect of Red, White and Royal Blue more. DNF at 28%. <laughs> okay, so first of all, again, interesting because I thought that Casey did the setting, the characters, the background characters really, really well in One Last Stop and it's something I consistently love in their books. So I was like, so I loved it, but also how much can you comment on that at 28%? Because August at that point is a bit of a recluse. She doesn't almost want to, or she's scared to make these friends. So yeah, the characters aren't going to be amazing at that point because August is too terrified herself to interact with them properly but like <laughs> okay <laughs> whatever um <laughs> i hope that when i wake up tomorrow morning i won't remember anything about this hideous book <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so looking at the top rated reviews for this though this hits the young 20 something audience as it was intended we could leave it there but we don't this is a young person's view of adulthood, written by a young person for a young person. Yes. That's the strength of writing something when you're in the weeds of the thing. You can capture exactly the mindset because you're there. The weakness, of course, is that you don't have the necessary distance to figure out your neck deep in bullshit. This feels like it's getting mad that a book that was written for a target audience met its target audience because you're not part of the target audience. It's like the same as those adults who read YA books and like, mmm, didn't like it, felt like it was written for teenagers. It's the same mentality. <laughs> this book is about the absolute worst kind of people, the lowest dregs of humanity, the scum of the earth, by which I of course mean people who engage on PDA on public transport. <laughs> Valid. Okay, so another review. They felt like it, the book was just trying so hard to make every single person quirky slash cool slash gay. Which, yes, they are, but have you met gay people? We congregate and we're cool and we're quirky. Just meet real gay people in real life. Anyway, next book. <laughs> okay, so next up is Giddy the Ninth. And now this book is a very Marmite type book. Some people love it, some people hate it. So I'm expecting a lot of people to find it complicated, to find it slow, to be confused on what's going on. But I think the beauty of Giving the Ninth is you're absolutely meant to feel that way, even more so in Harrow the Ninth. But then the beauty of it is sticking with it and having it all come together in front of you. So let's see what these reviews say. <laughs> Characters' names are New We Go, You On Go. Just basically a keyboard smash. I don't know why I tried to read that. Are they? I don't think they are. Like, they're definitely not, you know, John and Mary, but... Actually, no, there is a character called John in the sequel. <laughs> um, the main character is an absolute ass. She gets a chance to get off the planet and her literal response is go suck a dick. <laughs> That's very Gideon. Okay, I find a Spanish review that also found it very, very boring. <laughs> okay, so there are a lot of DNFs <laughs> not very far in. Um, <laughs> I almost drowned in the snark and the clever, witty dialogue. <laughs> I love the clever, witty dialogue without the air quotes. <laughs> DNF at page 79. I hate to say it, I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know what the fuck is happening in this book. This book could be walking down the street, I wouldn't know a thing. Sorry to this book. You know what, that's valid. It's not for everyone, it's, it's a confusing book. <laughs> This is a lesbian necromancers in space fantasy SF novel. Out of the three words from this blurb, only necromancers has any notable presence. 
While the protagonist, Gideon Nav, is a lesbian, it is more on a back burner, like her mentioning that some girls are hot. I'm sorry? <laughs> queer characters don't need to perform their queerness to be queer. <laughs> she's a lesbian whether or not she's currently kissing a girl. Oh my god. I have also enjoyed reading textbooks more. This is my least favourite book of the year. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. There's someone here who really liked it up until the ending and then hated it so much they gave it one star. And I can understand that when I first read this book, I did not know how to rate it because of how it ended. I felt like it it just didn't fit the story at all. I felt like it was almost a betrayal, as this person says. And I was just like, I don't know how to cope with this. I actually read spoilers for the second book to see if something happened to then decide how I felt about the first book. Because I didn't even know if I wanted to continue the second book if this thing didn't happen. It did, we're fine. But I was just, to me, I was like, I hate this ending so much. Like we build this up so beautifully. I love everything about it. And then that happens. So like, I get what this reviewer is saying. I can understand that, I can sympathize with that. That's a valid point. I wouldn't give it one star if I really enjoyed up until that point though. That's a bit drastic for me, but you know, I respect them. If someone says they're actually rating it zero stars. I don't know why this book is super hyped. The only good thing about this book is the cover. I despised every second of it. You know what, something about that just cracks me up. And I think Gideon Nav would quite like that as well. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I like it. <laughs> Someone's got a picture in a review of like a skull and in its mouth it says CNF at 72%. Time is precious and you have wasted mine. That is so extra. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Someone calls it boring and dorky. Someone else saying something similar. Look at that cover, just look at it. Marvel at the thing of beauty and weep for it being wasted on a book that promises so bloody much and yet managed to deliver oh so little. <laughs> I will agree with you on one thing. It's a very good cover. So the final book I'm going to talk about is The Midnight Lie by Marie Rutkowski. Um, I'm just very intrigued to see what people think of this one. Oh, Shalia from Shut Up Shalia is the top negative review. Uh, she said she was painfully bored with the book and it took four months to finish. <laughs> I read it in like two days. I couldn't put it down, so like I really cannot relate, but valid. So there's a review here that says that they found it exceedingly hard to not be annoyed past a certain point because of the main character's oblivionness to the circumstances around her which eventually started to border on idiotic. They go on to say they don't want to veer into victim blaming, but um, to them it was just very, very clear that they were abusers. They're almost cartoonishly evil, though realistic in their manipulation, and it's blatantly obvious to the reader. And it's like, yes, it can be deliberately obvious to the reader, but that doesn't mean that it's obvious to Nirim, who has been brought up in this society, in this po politics of the society, but also with her, I think her stepmother, I think she refers to her as, in this abusive cycle. And like, <laughs> I don't know, it does feel a bit like blaming her when you're like, why aren't you getting out of an abusive relationship fast enough? But she's surrounded by these toxic relationships and just being suppressed in the society. And it's just like, of course, of course she's not going to know any different. Of course she's not going to realise it's bad until she has someone who actually goes, okay, that's not right, who's been raised in a completely different society. Like, but she still begin. she has that initial this isn't right thought from Sid, but then has to learn that for herself and that takes time. And I don't know, to me it felt like a very realistic situation to to not realize these abusive patterns especially considering the society that she lives in where there's she had no good examples i don't know so i've seen a few books talk about how slow the book is and express their disappointment with that express their boredom with that and that's valid i get it i don't typically like slow books but i liked this one <laughs> i thought that the slow burn plot worked really really well with the way Nerum's character had to develop to reach the point of the ending like that couldn't have been a quick development that needed the time and care that Marie Rutkowski took with it. So, mm, yes, I can understand 
not enjoying this little paste book because I often don't, but it was necessary here. It worked well here in my opinion. I did not like the main character, not that I got to know her enough to care. She did not question anything and accepted everything like the truth. <laughs> and this is like what I was coming back to saying before, she had no other idea of what the world could be like, what society could be like. Like, she's raised in the society having no other experience with anything else. Of course she's going to believe it and take everything as truth. Come on. Again, more saying Nirin was so annoying and blind and stupid. Oof. Story, there was no plot, none whatsoever. There's no build up to a big reveal. Ugh, it's, it's not that type of book. <laughs> it's a very character focused, character driven book. The plot is her character development, her relationship with Sid, her relationships with her mother and with that annoying guy. <laughs> and then Sid and Nirin discovering this magic is kind of almost background to Nerim's own character development. That's the important part. It's a character driven book. That doesn't mean that there's no plot, it just means it's a different plot to what you're expecting. Lord bless, this book was bad. <laughs> the romance was cliche at best. No, that's it. That's just too far. <laughs> I love the romance in this book. In the vlog where I read it in Gideon the Ninth and some other books, you can see me having a breakdown over it, going feral over it. I love the romance. So, <laughs> Seeing people who don't like the romance, I can't. <laughs> They're just wrong. Okay, people saying Sid's a lesbian stereotype, Nurm's internal monologue is, but being a lesbian is bad. This book is like one of my favorites because of the way that this series deals with lesbianism. So like, I don't agree with this review. <laughs> and like Nurm's character development, part of it is her realizing that she's a lesbian, that it's possible to like women. Like, how do you expect her to go from this society, this heteronormative society where she doesn't even know same-sex attraction can exist, to realizing she likes a girl and not think, oh no, this is bad, this is wrong. Like, <laughs> she just, that's just the society she lives in. And that seems to be a common theme in these reviews where people aren't t appreciating the society that she lives in, these beliefs she's grown up in, that she's not seen anything else. So, mm, I don't like it. <laughs> And okay, everyone is welcome to their own opinions. That goes for all of the reviews in this video, but to me, it felt like uh, this review has missed the point a bit. And yes, I'm going to leave it there because I'm going to get annoyed otherwise. But that has been me reading negative reviews of my favorite books. I hope this has been enjoyable, not just me ranting. But yeah, it was actually, I enjoyed doing this. I was having a good time. I might do it again at some point. I quite enjoyed it. But yes. Um, as always, there will be links to these books in, on Goodreads down below if you want to read some of these reviews for yourself or add them to your TBRs, whatever. As well as my social media links if you want to keep up with me elsewhere, you know, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Goodreads, all that good stuff. And yes, just thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in another video soon.